Hello, and welcome back to Kingdom Minded Thinkers. Let us prepare for this Sunday, Lord's Will. So today's topic and title is unity in the body of Christ. Amen. And it's coming out of the book of Ephesians chapter four, verses one through 16. And this is your December 18th, 2022 Sunday school session here to get you ready for Sunday school, to get you excited, to get you going and get you thinking about what's uh, in the lesson plan to, to, to be able to commune with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Before we get started, let us have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this anointed time. God, this appointed time. Lord, we thank you for the unity that's being spread and scattered out through the body of Christ, God, as we all come together, Lord, in unity, lifting you up, God, working, doing our part each and individually together, God, as a body, as a unit, as a whole, in Christ Jesus. And so, Lord, I loose it up on every member, every student, every teacher that we all get up on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Get up to be about our Father's business, that we all get up on the, 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 with one accord that we do this with unity, that we lift up your name, God, that we cry loud and spare not that we lift. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that we lift your name up on high, letting others know that you are soon to return and that we must be unified, ready for your return, waiting and watching for you in the name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So excited to talk to you about the Sunday school lesson on today. And it is talking about the word unity. We're togetherness, oneness. As you can see the picture up here, we, 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 we latch, we link arms. We're, we're accountable for each other. We're working together in the body of Christ. And that is a very important part of uh, of our Christian walk. And so with that being said, if you're not able to get along with your brothers and sisters, because of whatever reason, I loose it up on you right now in the name of Jesus, that you will do what you need to do, which is apologize. If you need to apologize, which is to, to, to take responsibility, you know, when, when things happen, because that's, something that could cause a disruption in a relationship, whether, you know, it's husband and wife, mother and children, father and children, sisters and brothers in Christ. That's, that's something that, that will disrupt unity when there is a discord there. So I loose it up on you right now in the name of Jesus, that you get that thing right with your sister or brother or whoever that may be in Jesus name, because we, we in a day and time where we just don't know, um, uh, that the, uh, we, this is just what it is period. We don't know the day nor the hour that the son of man is going to return for us. Yes. But we think we, we, we don't know if it's going to be tonight, tomorrow, or the next day, because it could be at any time now. All right. So being in unity, talking about the body of Christ. Okay. So Bible truth, let's get there. Hallelujah. All right. So although each of us brings different gifts, we find true unity as we grow in Christ, who is the head of the whole body. All right, so let's go right on to it. And if you're new here, welcome to the Kingdom Minded Thinkers family. We love you guys so very much. And, and thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing us to share the word of God with you on today. And thank you for allowing us to come in and commune with you and dine with you and 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 talk with you uh and, and be a part you you're being a part of the kingdom minded thinker family thinkers family and so if you're new here uh please hit that subscribe button to allow um 
you know, the content creators of, of, of YouTube, uh, the people that run this to know that this uh, content is very helpful and that it'll spread more when uh, it is shared and con uh, comments are made and subscribers are hitting the subscribe button. So we welcome you to our family and we hope that you uh, enjoy the Sunday school lessons as we bring them out and teach them and also the classroom when it's loaded up with good rich teaching on uh, life on uh, how to conduct yourself in Christ. Amen. And that's what the Sunday school is talking about as well. All right. So light on the word. All right. So spiritual gifts are the skills and abilities given to all believers by the father through his spirit. Now, with that being said, the first thing that came to my mind was God gives these gifts as he wills them. He gives it to us as he, he wants to. I mean, he chooses you. Some people can sing. Some people can play music. Some people can preach real good. Some people can sew clothes. Some people can make plays, you know, and orchestrate those those uh, those playwrights some people can rap some people have rhythm just you know it just everybody has different gifts but all these gifts are to be used to build up the body of christ amen so that's what i want you to think on while we're in the sunday school lesson today uh is it's, it's everything that god gives us is for the building of his kingdom for his use for his pleasure amen all right so um these gifts are for the purpose of enabling Christians to carry out his plan. Uh, as we come together, uh, we, we get together, just think of the church service and the flow and the order of things. When we come together in the Sunday school, how that, that, that's the, the, the breakfast that we have. But before we start Sunday school, amen, prayer goes forth, you know, in the Sunday school. And some of us don't get there till after the prayer has happened, but we know that it has happened because there's a shift in the atmosphere. You can come in and, and, and they're teaching and things of that, that nature, but you have the prayer, the Sunday school, which is your breakfast. And then after Sunday school there's scripture and, and prayer again and then there is praise service and that's what a praise service conductors get up and th this is all breaking the ground so that the word can come in and cut and penetrate the word the, the the hearts of man and then after that and these are all gifts that people are able that, that that's operating these things while we're in church service. And then after that, the word comes or prophetic word comes. We just never know which way it's going to go at our church because we are not by program. Amen. And I thank God for that. We are spirit led. And that means we are led by the spirit of God. He does what he wants. We yield to him and we do not quench the Holy spirit. Amen. That's the best kind of church to be in amen all right so now that's to carry out god's plan you know god will call out just the one and and he called me out last sunday and i thank god for uh his 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 word i thank god for his words of encouragement jesus promised his disciples that they also would receive the gift of the spirit who would guide them this was fulfilled this was fulfilled uh the day of when the day of pentecost had came for those that were uh uh, believers. Uh, and so when we talk about it in the book of acts, it talks about the day of Pentecost and when it, when it, when it was like a sound of a Russian mighty wind, everybody in the building was filled because they were all believers, followers of Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus promised us the, the, the gift and that, that is your right. That is your gift. You know, that is your right to receive the gift. Amen. Of the Holy spirit and whose spirit is that? That's certainly most none other than God's spirit. Amen. And we need his spirit to hear the, the, the sound of the alarm when the trumpet is, uh, going to be when that cry is going to be made for us saints to get up out of here. Amen. But Paul is talking about us being filled with the spirit so we can be in tune and unity being one with him. Amen. All right. So spiritual gifts are for the benefit of the body of believers. Didn't I just tell you that not just for individual benefit or pleasure. It ain't just for you. This is for your brothers and sisters. It's for all of us to enjoy. If somebody can sing and sound like an angel, that's for all of us to enjoy. Because why? Just think of the example. When that person is going forth, they're not singing to you. They singing unto God. They sing in to God. And so while we're all listening and tuning in to that, that, that individual that's singing, cause we have a, um, 
a dynamic uh, sister at our church that sings under the anointing of God. We all usher in or a- and able to go into the presence of God together while she's singing praises to him and, 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 and and the spirit of God is, is laying heavy on the place, uh, and and so forth with like our pastors and, and so forth. This is, this is how we all share these gifts because when one is going forth, we're all in the, in the wagon together going forth and reaching, uh, and, and, and reaching out to God and he reaches back to us. So that's, that's why this is not just for one person. This ain't just for you to be selfish with. This is for everybody. And one more thing before we go to the next um, section here. Uh, when you have a gift that God has given you, that is your talent. God expects you to use your talent for his use, not for Satan's use. And so with that being said, what are you doing with your talent? Some people are taking their talent to the world because they say that's where money is. That's where that's where they, they, they can get paid. They feel love out there. And that is not what God has designed for you and the gift that he's decided to give you. Your gift is made for you to use to praise him with. Whatever God bless your hands to do, God wants you to use that to glorify him to build up everybody to to the saints to to, the edifying uh to to build them up for his kingdom to get them prepared so whatever gift it is that god has given you whether it's doing hair whether it's playing music whether it's being a nurse whatever it is god expects you and i to use those gifts for the building of his kingdom to glorify him in amen okay so the greatest gift that it talks about is the gift of love all right so the place of the church in the world all right so if you'll turn there quickly All right, so Paul lays the foundation uh, concerning Christ and his church in previous uh, portions of the letter. Now focus, he focuses on this portion uh, portion now, now focused on more uh, on a more practical purpose, setting out guidelines for his readers concerning Christian conduct. And we need to visit that section all the time concerning Christian conduct because when we are in Christ we behave a certain way and that's 24 hours and seven days a week we behave like the children of God because that's who we are amen we dress a certain way we don't go outside and be naked and do things of the world we are separate we don't we don't act like them we don't behave like them we don't dress like them we don't think like them and somebody said well she sounds like she just you know this but it, it is it is what it is we don't have carnal mindedness we think uh, uh, with with the mind of Christ and so that puts us at a different state than somebody else who's not so when I say them I'm, I am I, I mean what I say those that do not follow Christ that means we don't commune together I mean I, we can have lunch together if you want to talk about the Lord and you want to give your life to Christ but for me to hang with you and you got a cigarette and some alcohol and things of that nature I can't conduct and behave that way and be caught with you because I'm not going to let my goods be spoken evil of. All right. So he first given them an overview of the church place in the world. All right. So the church is calling to unity. Uh, Paul considered himself a prisoner for the Lord as well as one who belongs to the Lord. Positioning himself as an example, he issued a plea to the Ephesian Christians to walk worthy of their vocation or to live in a manner that is consistent with their high calling. When you become a child of God, Amen. That is your reasonable service to serve God, to come in and praise and worship him. It's a lifestyle. It's a duty. It's a commitment. It's not a hobby. Amen. All right. So our calling is not a hobby or a pastime. It is our life's aim and purpose. You have a purpose. Some of y'all don't know what your purpose is yet, but you have a purpose. You want to know why you're here? You're here to glorify God. You're here to praise God. You're here to lift his name up. You're here to tell other people about Jesus. You're here to show people the way. You're here to become a light and become followers of Jesus Christ. You're here to live. Amen. That's what your purpose is, is to be saved. Hallelujah. And that's, that's what God has given all of us to do. Will everybody accept their purpose? Nope. 
Some people may laugh and some may even look at you like you're crazy, but trust me, we here for a reason. Amen. All right. So Paul starts this chapter with an appeal for us to live a spirit filled Christ self Christ centered life. All right. And I, now this is talking about Paul. This is what he said. We're going to do quote unquote what he said. I, a prisoner of the Lord appeal to you. Now, Paul is saying this prisoner or captive of the Lord means Paul regarded himself uh, as both a prisoner of Jesus and lo uh, and loyal uh, and loving obedience as an apostle and as one in custody for Christ because of his loyalty to the gospel. All right. So Ephesians four, we're going to read verses one through six. Give you guys time to get there. If you don't already have uh, your Bibles open. All right. So Ephesians four, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye were, you are called. Ye are called. Sorry about that. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is only one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. All right, so Paul urges the believers to conduct their lives in a manner that would match their calling. Uh, commitment to Jesus is basically what, what, what that stands out to be. You're committed to God when nobody else is looking. You're committed to God when people are watching. You're just committed to God 24 hours, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. You're totally sold out to Jesus because he did something for us that is it's just so amazing, the love. Who do you know would die for you literally and go through some things and hadn't done nothing to nobody all because he looked down the line of eternity and saw you and I and saw us with a, a, a heart of love saying that they need a chance. They need a savior. This job must be done. Who would do that for you? Nobody else because there's only one that could and would. His name is Jesus Christ. So, so when people try to exit him out and, and don't want to follow him, you know, that's, that's, that's a sad situation because you're going to bow and you're going to confess whether it be now or later, but it's best to do it right now. Amen. Christian life is the yes response. It's it, when we start living like Christians, saints, amen. It's our yes response to God's calling. Amen call he calls us and he calls the ones that this is what he, he he calls us to worship him he calls us to be separate he calls us to righteousness amen we must live accordingly to the call paul gives five characteristics of the life worthy of our calling lowliness meekness long suffering patience mutual forbearance and love we are to be lowliness in mind, recognizing the value of others. So don't ever put yourself on the forefront and put yourself on a pedestal because that, that's not the spirit of God. We think of others before we think of ourselves, you know, and the Bible even speaks about it. Let other people praise you. You don't go out and and praising yourself and, and, and herating your own name. That's, that's, that's not how God works. You know, won't want us to work and be in a prideful state. That is a, uh, that's, that's, that's not a good situation because after a pride comes, there's certainly a fall. Amen. All right. So we walk in meekness, unwilling to provoke others and not easily offended or provoked. This is something that a lot of people are working on right now. And those that are not working on it, you need to work on it because God is requiring for us to not provoke others and not to easily be offended. And this is something that, you know, cause this Satan tries to talk to us and work on our mind 
to put things there and say things about other people to get us to think a certain way. That's not true. So with that being said, we can't be easily offended because sometimes people don't mean to say things or look at you a certain way. Sometimes things just come out and that's just who they are. You know, as far as, you know, how they talk to people and there is a level of respect that we all are supposed to have toward each other. But if you if everything offends you, then you need to do a self check and check you. Amen. And don't be easily provoked. And if somebody drive in front of you, now you provoked. You got to drive up and get them back, blow the horn and horn rage. You don't know if that person got a gun or not. Save your life and be quiet and just let them go on because you can't whoop the world. And all that stress that you're putting on your body, doing all that, does nothing but raise your blood pressure and cause other problems in your body. Whoever that is for, I loosen up on you right now to get your life together and not be easily offended or easily provoked amen and that you'll be willing to keep peace amen in the name of jesus all right so long suffering or patience not seeking revenge or being aggravated uh god shows us this virtue through jesus christ and what a great example he showed us by living, being, being here on this planet, loving us and, and, and for just enduring all the things that they put him through because he loves us. So what a great example. Amen. And Lord, I thank you for that. All right. For bearing one another, putting up with or enduring Bearing with someone's mistakes or attitude. That forbearing one another, God means what he says when he talks about us loving each other. Just that, that deep love as you love yourself. Being um, patient with other people. You want people to be patient with you, right? So be patient with other people. Know that other people are going to make mistakes. Know that their attitude is not going to be great all the time, but be patient because sometimes people don't feel good. Sometimes things happen uh, and go on. Like earlier, my husband was patient with me. Uh, I had made a mistake and um, he was very patient. And so I thank God for that. And so honey, I love you. Uh, I thank God for, you know, the unity and the, the oneness and the love because love will make you be patient with your husband. He'll make you be patient with your wife. He'll make you be patient with your children. That's the love of God. And when you don't have patience, you don't have love. And I, I, I can boldly say that because God is love and in love, these characteristics are there. All right. So now these four characteristics are anchored in love that backs up what I just said. All right. So Paul declares that oneness of the church arises from the unity of the Godhead, which is the Trinity. We know God, the father, God, the son, and God, the Holy, Holy spirit. The church is one body. We are filled with God's Holy spirit, Holy spirit. Amen. All right. So, uh, now with that being said, the one spirit unifies the body and works through it. The church with its various parts is joined to the head who is Christ by the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, sorry about that, y'all, to function as one body. The church is called into one hope, which refers to the present reality and the future benefit of life. And that's everlasting life. Now, as Christians, we have the number two, the, the Christian calling and hope is founded on the one true God. And his son, Jesus Christ, that's who, that's who our Lord and Savior is, uh, who is the object of our faith, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Three, the church is described as one family. We are one body of Christ. I was telling, telling uh, my sis, uh, my beautiful sis, amen, earlier today. I think it was today or yesterday. Well, actually, it's a new day now, so it may have been yesterday or the day before. Uh, that we are a body of Christ and that we just want to be around each other because we are of likeness. We we have a lot of commonality. We get along well. We love each other and we just, we, we love being around a sister and brother in Christ Jesus. Amen. It makes a difference. You feel different. Uh, it, it builds you up encouragement, the love that you just feel. Uh, Amen. Uh, and so, um, now with that being said, we're one body of believers, but and then we all belong to God and there is only one true God who is the father of the saints. All right. So the church gifts, 
the unity of the church must be balanced by diversity, uh, the, uh, by each of us working together. Uh, we all have an assigned unique, uh, uniquely, uh, g- uh, given gift from God that he wills to us, but your gift is, it's a balance. We don't have not one person that just up here and everybody down here all the way from the pulpit to the back door. We all have a job to do. If you are usher, your job is just as important as the next person. If you are a church housekeeper, which means you clean the church, your job is just as important as the next person. If you are the person that counts the money in the church, your job is just as important as the next person. So is the praise service conductors, all these things, these auxiliaries and things that is done in the body of Christ. These are very important parts of the body of Christ going out and ministering, encouraging people, being a people greeter. You ought to be the best people greeter at that door that anybody has ever seen. And when they see you, they ought to feel the anointing of God, the love of God, because that is the first impression of one that comes in the church and people come because they are broken because they need help. And so they come and they see you standing there. And so they should feel love radiating through you because that's what God has placed on inside of us. Amen. Now, with that being said, even though we all have similarities, we all are not the same. So God is calling for us to operate in our own gift, not imitating another person. Now you may see some things, like I said, in similarity, but we are not the same. I'm not going to get up and try to be my pastor's wife or my sisters and brothers in church. No, Uh, I have to be my own self, my unique And this is assigned to me and God gave us all our own uniqueness. And so when you figure out who you are and when you pattern yourself after a a righteous woman of God for women and a righteous man for men, um, you're going to see a lot of characteristics that are, are kind of the same because we're all filled with the Holy spirit and we are a body of born again, baptized believers. That's why we, we, we love, we care. We, 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 we pray for people. I mean, it's a lot of things that we do together as a body of Christ. Now also his grace has given us gifts as he sees fit. Paul lets us know that there is only one Christ. That is the, this prophecy is talking about Amen, And it's talking about, um, diversity and uniqueness of the gifts and functionality in Ephesians four and eight, Paul quotes Psalm 68 and 18 as a prophecy that the Messiah would ascend to heaven and conquer his foes and ascend up on high, he, he led the captivity captive and gave gifts unto unto men. Refers to Christ's position on the right hand of the Father as conqueror over death, having defeated Satan and his agents from there. He gives gifts to the church. Now, with this being said, in order for him to have ascended, he had to have come here. So some people might think that now he ain't came and he's never stepped foot on this planet in order for him to have ascended from the earth. He had to have come here first. Amen. All right. So the gift of the leaders is to equip the saints, uh, to be prepared for the work of the ministry and edifying the body of Christ. So that's why we see the leaders, uh, giving words of encouragement and y'all encouraging words. is going to whoop you sometimes. Because they got to get that sin out of you. They got to preach it to you and teach it to you. That's not discouragement. That's encouragement to the max. That means that they love you. They loving you real hard when they tell you the truth. So don't reject truth. Amen. And if that has been you and it has caused you to have a problem, I loose it up on you right now in the name of Jesus, that you'll be able to take correction and that you'll be able to move forward and that you'll be able to live in holiness in Jesus name. Amen. All right. So uh, verse seven. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, he saith, when he ascended up on high, he laid captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it 
but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the name is the same also that ascended up for up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. And he get, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. All right. So the urgency to unity, Paul called for the Ephesians to be true to who they are called to be in, in Christ Jesus and noted several truths. First, their responsibility to uh, be on it, 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 they are responsible. They have a responsibility to be in unity in the body of Christ. Second, the, to strive of the, the, the strive of unity don't call for you to be the same and dull this, which means we're going to be different. Uh, and, and we don't just imitate each other like that. If somebody says hallelujah, we go hallelujah. Try to do it exactly how somebody else does it. My sound, my tone, my, my, my voice is totally different from everybody else's. And so that makes me, me. And that's what brings flavor to the church. As far as when, when the spirit of God is, is moving because we can't do this ourselves. It has to be under the anointing of God. Third, the church is a living organism of life uh, uh, of alive saints. A man who is expected to grow. Now y'all see that you are expected to grow. So if you, You've been on me for 20 years. Something's wrong there. You got to start examining yourselves because you should be growing. You shouldn't be in the same place you was 10 years ago. Even as children of God, we should be moving further, loving more, uh, giving more, uh, preaching more, living right more, you know, and, and, and that's growth. Amen. And there's nothing wrong with growth. It's, it's a good thing. All right. So as, uh, and, and number five, as the church grows, its members should take on more and more the nature of Christ. He is the head of the church. And we should all be doing that. Amen. All right. So the, the, the road to maturity, all disciples are all disciples. Sorry about that. Are called up on to grow. It's a process. It's a process. And don't try to skip the process. It's not uh, uh, like you're going through grade school and it's 12 grades. And after you get that diploma, you ain't got to go to school no more, go to college if you want to, but you don't really have to do it anymore. That's not what this is about. As long as you are in Christ, you are forever learning. You are forever growing. And this is not one of those things where you just like a course that you take and that's it. No, this is a ongoing thing. Somebody say, well, I've read the Bible front and back. Well, after you've read the whole Bible, go back to the beginning and start again because sin has not stopped because trial and tribulation has not stopped. We will not come out of this until God takes us to the other side until we meet and see Jesus. Amen. That's why we got to continue in this walk in Christ. It's a daily thing. Amen. We got to continue towards spiritual maturity. Amen. And we got to work and believe and know God is working on us. Know that no, and have the knowledge of God. Amen. And know that God is soon to return. But in the midst of that, knowing all these things, we got to start doing the work of God. We got to be present, not just in body, but in mind and spirit and show up. And we got to be mature, not being juvenile in the, in, in the body of Christ, where if somebody came and gave some false teaching and doctrine, you would just be here and there. Don't know what truth is. Won't open your own Bible up. Won't even learn. Won't even try to apply yourself being tossed hearing the here and there to and fro carried about with every wind of doctrine. God is against that. Know how to stand. Know that you are to read this word for yourself. Our understanding when we grow and be mature is solid. Amen. Verse 13 till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of God unto a perfect man, unto the, pl the, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men 
and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love. I want y'all to see how they spoke it. They spoke the truth in love. May, uh, grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that, which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Amen. Amen. And I thank God for the Sunday school lesson on today. And what I had just read, uh, that's what I was talking to you about, uh, being strong in God, knowing his word. So when you hear something that's not right, you can easily correct it and be ready for, uh, you know, to, to, to let them know, Hey, that's not right. And you can identify, you know, what's wrong, you know, and, and what's not right. Amen. All right. So now with that being said, let me give you some words of wisdom. We are joined together y'all. And I thank God for that. Um, as a body of born again, baptized believers, it's urgent that we work together in unity in these last and final days, because it's going to take all of us working together to go out and gather more souls and God calls us to do that. We can't do that if we're too busy fighting each other. And that is that that's a stagnation. That's something that causes a disruption and that's out of order. Amen. So if you've been fighting each other in the body of Christ, this is your warning to stop doing that. Now get along with your brothers and sisters. Amen. We are one in Christ Jesus, not two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten all the way up to whatever number we are one in Christ Jesus. Now as a body of Christ, we are all important. You are very important to God. And so is the gift that he gives you that to work and operate in. Don't ever think that you're not important or that the gift that God has given you doesn't have a major role in the body of Christ. Cause it does. Each of us are needed. You are needed, my sister and brother. And if nobody has ever told you that, I'm telling you, you are needed. Amen. It's time for us to stand up and cry loud and spare not and be in unity, be with oneness, be with one accord. Holy Ghost came and filled the whole room when everybody was with one accord. Unity. God loves unity. So with that being said, let us all be in unity, Sunday school teachers, with teaching this word and encouraging each other and 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 actually just because we, we're not here to work against each other. We're here to work together. Amen. And so I thank God for each and every one of you. I pray that this lesson has blessed you all on today. And I ask God to favor you and, and to shower you with his love and that you all also be able to work and operate in unity. Amen. And so uh, on this week, your assignment is to think on things that you can do in the body with the body of Christ, that unity would make it go that much more better for you to, to, to lend out, a, a, a to reach out a lending hand. Amen. So until next time, my friends, I'll talk to you guys soon, Lord's will. Bye-bye.